This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is Matthew chapter 25, beginning at the 14th verse. Jesus said, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. So here it is, what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ, in the name of God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. What a great morning. A beautiful weekend. No rain this weekend. Just glorious sunshine. It's wonderful. Um, The parable for today, so we're we're coming to the end of the church year. Uh, We're working our way through um, what's called ordinary time, and we're coming to the end of the story before we begin again with Advent. And so there are these stories, these parables, uh, that have to do with the end of time. And uh, and so the the one for today is oftentimes called uh, the parable of the talents. Um, It might be uh, maybe uh, better called uh, the uh, the the parable of the, of the gracious or generous master, uh, because the focus really becomes in this, uh, in this parable, in this story, on the, the, the master and the character of the master and how he responds to these three different servants uh, of his. And so, uh, so we'll look at this, at this master and, uh, and see him. So, so we see that there are, uh, there, there are these three servants uh, that come, and, uh, and the first one uh, comes and he gives to him five bags of gold. And the second one he gives two bags of gold. And the third one he gives uh, one bag of gold. And they're told to go and to invest uh, those resources, that money, um, on his behalf. And so what can we tell about this master who is, who's, there, uh, who's there kind of giving uh, these resources of his? Well, so the first thing we have to do is, is we have to ask, so what is it about this interchange that has happened? Um, so this master has taken these, these servants of his, and he knows he's going away on a trip. So he's, he's going to be gone for a long time. And so the first servant, he comes and he gives five bags of gold. Now, we, our translation translates it bags of gold. Other translations use the word talents of gold. A uh, talent is the word that's used in, uh, in the Greek but it's actually a, a Hebrew word. Uh, a talent was the largest unit of measure that the Hebrews had available to them. 
Uh, oftentimes we think in terms of tons because we have you know, big pickup trucks and, and you know, cranes and things that can haul things around that weigh tons. Well, they didn't have that. Uh, they had um, their bodies <laughs> and their servants and they had animals. And so the ability to be able to haul things around was divided into, into what for us would be smaller. So these are bags that weigh in general about 75 pounds. So you know, something that, that a typical person could carry from one place to another. So these are bags uh, of, of 75 pounds worth of gold. And so I just did a little math. Uh, the, uh, the, so the, the price of gold uh, this past week has been someplace around $1,200 plus. And so if you said 75 pounds times that amount of gold, a bag of gold, would, uh, would the value of it would be someplace around $1.5 million. So, so for this first servant, he calls him and, uh, and he gives him not one bag, but five bags, which according to my math, which is not always very good, but I think I got this one right, <laughs> um, is seven and a half million dollars worth of gold. And he just hands it over to the servant. And then he takes the second servant and he, and he gives him two bags of gold, which is three million dollars. And then he takes the third servant and he hands uh, one bag over to him. That's one and a half million dollars. Altogether, it's about $12 million worth of gold. And he just hands it over into the hands of these servants. And he himself is going off on a long trip. There are a couple things that we can tell about the master from this story. Number one, he is a master of tremendous capacity. I mean, he's, got, he's got a ton of money. I can't say ton. He's got a lot of money. A lot of money, uh, and he's interested in continuing to see that grow. And so he's, a, he's got a lot of capacity, and he's a businessman, and he wants to continue to make investments. And so he's willing to be able to make that investment in the, in the form of, of these servants of his, to be able to take out that money and to invest it. So he's got tremendous capacity. He's entrepreneurial. He wants to be able to see it grow. Let me just ask you this question. If you had $12 million worth of gold, would you hand it off into the hands of three of your employees and then just take off on a long trip? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, but he does that. So it says that he's a tremendously trusting master. He is willing to risk a tremendous amount based on what he knows of these three. And he knows something about these three because uh, he says that he, that he divvies it out each according to their ability, he says. So he knows his servants. So he knows the likelihood that they are going to return and he knows their ability. So he discerns between five, five talents and two talents and one talent. He knows the capacity that they have in order to be able to be uh, productive in the work that they've given. So we've now, dis we've now discovered a tremendous amount about this, about this master, um, that, that he, th he now is able to, to bring in to, uh, to his, the, the influence that he has and to his, to his employ, these three servants, and he's willing, to, he's willing to allow them this opportunity of a lifetime to be able to really do something with their career that really is going to matter. So he entrusts them with that possibility and that potential. And so um, each of them takes uh, those, uh, those investments, and, and then after a long time, he comes back. Um, and the, the first servant comes, and, and you know, he comes, and he brings not five bags of gold, but he brings ten talents of gold. He doubled the investment. He says, here it is, master. Look at what I've done. I, for some reason, I have this image in my head of a cat that brings a mouse to the owner. You know, it's just kind of, <laughs> it's very proud of this mouse. Thing. So here's, my, here's my, the five that you invested, and here's the five that I gained. Look at this. And the master just beams. Oh, well done, good and faithful servant, he says. You have been faithful in, did you catch that? So you have been faithful um, with a few things. So now we find out even more about the master. This amount of wealth and money that he's got, 
We haven't even seen not part of it. Not part of it. We've not, I mean, we've not even scratched the surface. This is just a test. And so this, this servant is coming, and, he's, and he's, he's, uh, he's, he's putting it out there for him. And, and the master says, good job. Well done. Yeah, you've shown your fa- yourself faithful in just this little bit. Oh, let me tell you, let me pull back the curtain because I'm going to put you in charge of many things. In Luke's gospel, for the sim- a similar parable, he says, I'm going to put you in charge of ten cities. Not ten bags of gold. A tremendous amount of responsibility, a tremendous amount of opportunity for this, uh, for this servant. But then he goes on to say, not just that, he says, but then he says, come and share your master's happiness. It's like the master's arms are just open wide. Come on in. There's a relationship here. This come and come and live with me. Be a part of the family. Come and join this, this, uh, this household of joy. Come and bring it all in and participate in it. Do these things that are going to be so creative. And so it's going to just be mind-blowing for you, the opportunity that this is for you. And the same thing happens then with the second uh, the second servant who comes in with two bags, the same thing happens. He gets this, the same opportunity to be able to come in and to be able to participate in this largesse uh, of, the, of, the, of the master. And then there's the third one, right? And then there's the third one. So the third one comes back, and you remember his words. Um, he says, um, master, he says, I knew that you were a hard man. Now, the rest, do you remember how, how short their statement was? You gave me five, I gave you ten. You gave me two, I gave you two. I gave you four. Um, how short their statements were. This guy, um, it's almost like he's been practicing a speech. He goes on and on, right? And he says, Master, he says, I knew that you are a hard man, investing where you, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Now, this is the trick. This is the turning point in, the, in, these, in this parable. Because if we buy what it is that the servant is saying, and, and oftentimes we might, uh, we might side with somebody who is a servant like this against somebody who is wealthy, uh, who's an employer. If we buy at that, then all of a sudden we turn against the master and say that he's being unjust. But is that what we've come to know about this master? Um, actually, not. I mean, we know that this master is actually incredibly generous. I mean, he's incredibly open with being able to share what it is that he's got and providing all kinds of opportunities. He's not curmudgeonly about it. He's open and, 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 and inviting people in. And so now we need to be able to turn our eyes to this servant and to be able to ask the question, so what did he do? Well, so he took this, he took this gold, this opportunity that was given to him, and he went and he dug a hole and he buried it in the ground. And then remember, the master is gone for a long time. So what did he do the entire time the master is gone? Nothing. Nothing. Except to live off the master. So he's still in the employ of the master, right? So he's off, (coughs) you know, collecting his paycheck. He's off doing whatever it is that he wants to do. He's off kind of living his life, just kind of throwing parties, you know, with his friends. It's, life is pretty nice when you get paid and don't have to go to the office every day, right? So you can kind of keep on doing this on the behalf of the master, just kind of keeping on you know, doing your thing until the day when the master shows up. And you get caught. You think you're never going to get caught. But have you ever been caught? So now all of a sudden, the master's there. And now all of a sudden, he has to reveal the fact that he had this opportunity and he never even cashed a check. He buried in the ground. And so quickly he goes and he digs it up. And I imagine this bag with all kinds of dirt and roots and worms hanging off it. And he comes up and and the master's standing there and he says, here, take what's yours. Be done with you. I'm done. 
the opportunity of a lifetime. And he passes it up. He passes it up, and he takes for granted the generosity of the master and misses all of the, all of the things that so much could have been his. So now we come to the fact that Jesus, of course, isn't just telling a story, right? He's telling a story to involve us and to recognize the fact that for us as his servants that he has given us a tremendous amount of opportunity. If you were doing a financial plan, um, you would say, um, these are my assets. You'd list your assets to be able to look at all of the things that are yours. And so to be able to look at all of your financial resources, uh, you'd be able to look at your house, you'd look at um, all of the things that are yours, and you'd say, you know, that's my, that's my, that's the sum total of who I am. Those are the things that I own, and then subtract the liabilities for it. But then you'd see what your net worth was. All of these are your assets. But we know that the assets that God gives to us are more than just our financial assets, our resources. They're things like, um, well, I can tell you. So I mean, if you're sitting here, you have tremendous resources because uh, there are a lot of people who I visit and who we know in the church that can't be here. They could not come and sit in these pews because physically they simply can't do it. So if you're able to sit here, if you're healthy enough to sit here, you've got a tremendous gift that has been given to you that often we just, I know I do, it take for granted. Um, you have the gift of your education. You know, we don't even think about the fact that we, that we when we want to interchange with one another, we speak English. Um, maybe you speak another language, but we speak English. Um, somebody taught us that. We've gone through an educational process. We are the, we stand on the shoulders of a tremendous educational system that has produced what's in our minds. That has been a tremendous gift that has been given to us. And the question becomes, so what do we do with those gifts? With, our, with the, the capacity that we have to care, with the capacity that we have to, to actually spend time with people, the ability to, to just listen to someone is a tremendous gift. In this world where we are enamored with talking, 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 how rare it is to have someone who will take the time to listen and to say a prayer out of compassion. The gift of time. The gift of being able to, to, to know that we can, we can look out on today and tomorrow and the, and the next day and with some reliability to be able to know that that's a gift given to us. Well, what do we do with that time? And we could go on and on and on and on and on, can't we, about our family members and friends, about the people who we care about. These gifts that are given to us, that are precious. And I have to tell you that sometimes I think the way that we live our, we live our lives and in our culture all the time, we take these gifts and we dig, them in a, we dig a hole and we bury them. And we don't pull them out until we get caught. We are given the opportunity of eternity, not just a lifetime, of eternity eternity to be able to see God's kingdom grow, to be able to see God take these things of ours and to be able to multiply them, to double them, triple them, to be able to have an impact on the lives of the people in our culture, in our time, in our families, in our neighborhoods, and around the world. And the danger is that we just, we just don't think about it because we think it's just all kind of our stuff. But it's not all our stuff. It's God's stuff. You know, the story's told about a very wealthy woman uh, who, uh, who had a, a servant, a maid, uh, who lived in her house. So, um, and uh, this servant served her very faithfully over decades. And finally, um, the servant woman died. And, uh, and, then the, uh, and then the wealthy woman herself died. And they both showed up at the pearly gates. And St. Peter is there welcoming them in, you know, so glad to see you, um, welcome. Uh, and they said, and St. Peter says, so um, there, here's a bus that's coming, and the bus is going to take you to see your new house, your new lodgings while you're here in heaven. And they said, so the, you know, the woman, the rich woman and her servant were there, and they said, oh, that's great, you know, we'll go see, go find a new house. 
So they both got on the bus, and the bus um, drives down the road, and they come to this neighborhood, and it stops in front of this tremendous palace. It's huge. It's absolutely, it goes on forever and ever. It's multiple stories. It's huge, big. And, uh, and the bus driver uh, gets up and go, walks over to the servant lady and says, this is your new house. And the servant lady says, well, that can't be. I mean, how can, that, can't, that can't be my house. And, she, and this, the angel says, yeah, I mean, that's your house. This is the one. This is where you're going to live. And so she's just kind of beside herself. And so she stumbles and she gets off the bus and there's an entourage of angels that are there to kind of, uh, you know, walk her into the house and orient her to this new place, her new abode where she's going to be living. And the, the wealthy woman is just looking and says, this is great. This heaven thing is going to be really good. I can't wait to see my place. And so then the bus continues and goes down, but it goes, it goes away farther and around some bends, and finally it comes to this place where there are several angels who are struggling with some sticks and tarps and a, and a cardboard box that is, that's there. And, uh, and the bus driver gets, off, gets up and says, ma'am, this, this is your house. And the woman said, this can't be. And he says, yes, this is your house. And so she gets off the bus and she walks over and these angels are struggling to kind of get the whole thing to stand up. And she says, what do you mean? This is my house. And one of the angels looks at her and says, listen, lady, we're doing the best that we can with the building materials you sent to us. <laughs> um, so is this life all there is? Or are we just beginning? The things that we do matter for just now? Or do they matter forever? Well, we each have to answer that question, don't we? This sense that we have, this calling on the part of Jesus to be able to embrace and to recognize that we are on an eternal journey and we have only just begun and as he sees us through each success, we are only in the training grounds for what, how it is that God is going to use us and where it is that we ultimately are destined to go. And so, this challenge for us on the part of Jesus to be asking the question, what do we think and how do we invest in this kingdom of God? How is it, Lord God, that we can use these resources that we have been given in order to be able to expand his kingdom and to see his influence grow. Because the kingdom of God in the end is all that matters. In the end, the kingdom of God is all that matters.